It seems that we're in the heart of the flu season, this time of the year when it seems people around are getting sick. Certainly our children seem to be getting sick so easily. And when that happens, I mean, it sometimes sets us back for days. We have that overall feeling of fatigue and weakness. But then there comes that time, and as we get older, maybe it's a little bit longer, but there's this exhilaration that overcomes us when we finally realize that we are past that illness and this overall sense of well-being which we so often take for granted returns. This Sunday we continue as we have the last two weeks in chapter one of the Gospel of St. Mark, uh, actually three weeks. Two weeks ago we heard that account, the prophetic call of Jesus to repent and believe in the Gospel. And last week we heard him teaching in the synagogue, and then he cured the man possessed by a demon. We saw that connection between his teaching and his healing power. Today we hear of the second miracle, the second cure that is recorded in Mark's gospel as Jesus heals Simon's mother-in-law. The scene recounted by Mark is very clear and very simple. And he almost puts in one sentence three distinct steps that our Lord takes in effecting this healing. We are told that he approached Simon's mother-in-law. He grasped her hand and he helped her up. I think these three movements are illustrative of God's love for us and symbolic of what he wants to do to us in all of our needs, in all the sicknesses of mind, body, and spirit that can afflict us. First, we are told that Jesus approached her. And I think we have to remember that he does that always to each of us. That he is not distant or disinterested as it can so often seem to us, but that he wants to come to us in every circumstance of our life. And he does that most powerfully, of course, in the life of the church and in her sacraments, in this Holy Eucharist that we are about to receive. Next, we hear that he grasped her hand. Again, in all of our trials and difficulties, he does the same for us. He reaches out to touch us. He wants to hold our hand to assure us of his constant care, to embrace us with his consolation and his peace. And then we are told that he helped her up. The Greek word that is used here actually means much more than our English translation can convey. It means he fully heals her, he energizes her, he embraces her, he encourages her again to restore her fully to an active and full life. The gospel then says the people pursued him but he went to pray and then he said he has to go to other towns to preach there too. And I think this is that reminder that his love is for all and his desire to heal is for all. And the healing that he offers is a total healing of mind, body, and spirit. And I think it's here we have to open ourselves to this power I think too often we can fall into the distortion of compartmentalizing our life of faith, that it's only here in this hour and in the spiritual realm that God can touch us. But then out there in the real world, there's all these practical things that we deal with that only have solutions found in practical things. We can only know physical healing through what science tells us. But even science now seems to repudiate this, as now most, if not all, medical schools require or offer classes in spirituality, as data studies have now confirmed the clear connection between prayer and spiritual health with physical health and well-being. Of course, all of us know the deterioration of our physical capacities that is unavoidable as we age, but even as we age, we are able to enjoy, I would suggest, a deeper health 
and a deeper happiness. Hopefully the wisdom that comes as we get older offers us a more healthy perspective on the things of this world. Yes, that will also lead us into times of great suffering. But even that suffering is a means by which we can know a sense of well-being. Job, in our first reading, we know the great calamities that befall him, and yet he perseveres in his faith in God. And the end of that book then shows how God offers him full restoration and healing, the healing that we sung in our responsorial today, that certainty that God's desire is to heal the brokenhearted. And so I think today's gospel and our readings offer us insights into God's never-ending care and concern for each of us. In that three-step process, we see that he always desires to approach us, as he did Simon Peter's mother-in-law, that he wants to grasp our hand to touch us most powerfully in this Eucharist to offer us his healing and peace. And then he wants to lift us up in the power of that life so that we can then help one another to experience and then share most fully the healing that he alone can give.